Hi guys, my name is Rohan and I'll be creating a series of videos on AWS services along with some talent, ETL, database and data warehouse related videos. As most of you know, cloud computing is an integral part in most of our projects today. So I thought I'll, I'll create these videos so that uh, everyone gets exposure and I hope uh, it's going to be helpful. So stay tuned and continue watching my videos and uh, thank you for all your support and you know likes and comments. So this is going to be a part one of video uh, and I would like to talk about some of the basics so that everybody uh, should start um, you know, getting into cloud. So the very first aspect is to understand what is cloud computing, how does it you know, different um, the comparison and etc. And we will talk about what is AWS and why do we need AWS. And let's look at um, the coverage and the services offered by AWS. right? And we will also look at uh, creating one free um, account on AWS so that uh, we can use the same account for all my future uh, upcoming videos. All right, so let's get started. Uh, the very first thing uh, I would like to explain here is the differences between the on-premise and the cloud, right? So on-premise is a uh, place where we install all our hardware, networks and uh, computing uh, within the local, um, you know, physical location. A cloud is nothing but a, uh, computing offered by the cloud, um, you know, provider, right? Which is uh, a remote, which which is not at our uh, physical location. So those are the you know primary uh, differences. And when it comes to cloud computing, there are several important factors, and I have listed few here. Uh, it has to be always you know scalable, reliable. Uh, the it should be efficient uh, when it comes to time and cost the business continuity processing and performance power and a few other you know maintenance related um, aspects as well right so let's uh, take a deep dive into cloud computing so um, scalability is um, a very important factor and if, if you want to scale the current infrastructure on the local you know physical location uh, it requires a lot of planning impact analysis and time and energy Right, it's not easy to scale any hardware uh, at your own location. So that's when a cloud uh, comes into play, uh, wherein it's very easy to scale based on the need. So when I say need, uh, it could be, you know, during the daytime or weekdays, you may need uh, higher uh, resources and over the weekend or over, you know, evening or non-peak hours, you may scale down the resources. So that becomes really handy in terms of, you know, cloud uh, computing. So the next aspect is reliability. Uh, when it comes to on-premise, it's very challenging uh, to maintain all the resources, uh, such as you know AC power and um, any anything uh, manpower that is required, or to make sure that uh, all the you know resources are maintained um, you know as per the need. So uh, there is a high chance that we may know, uh, we may lose some of the you know reliable um, you know needs. But whereas in cloud uh, infrastructure, it is very highly stable resources um, because uh, they uh, make use of uh, really high um, you know, bandwidth network um, and also the power and uh, alternate so source of energy. And uh, there is a whole lot of, uh, you know, firewalls and highly secure environment makes it reliable when it comes to cloud. So uh, reliability is really challenging on on-premise, but it's highly stable on uh, cloud. So the next difference is here is the maintenance. And this is of course a very important factor. Uh, and on-premise, it's not really easy. It, it may have multiple dependencies. And if you want to you know, replace any hardware, it requires you know, procurement process, you know, internal approvals, uh, placing the order, getting it, and then installing it. So that requires a lot of um, you know, uh, time uh, and also uh, dependencies when it comes to on-premise. Whereas in cloud, uh, since it's provided by a service provider, they will have all the stocks, required stocks and manpower. And there will be a lot of, you know, automated, um, you know, maintenance that happens in the cloud. So um, it, it becomes easy for them to uh, take care of uh, the maintenance. So the next one is the time. The uh, time required to um, make any changes to on-premise requires really high uh, time and energy. Uh, whereas in uh, cloud, uh, you don't have to worry. Uh, it's all taken care by the uh, cloud service you know, provider. 
and cost is another uh, important factor um, on premise infrastructure uh, requires a really high cost whereas uh, on the cloud it's very minimal since uh, we um, can actually scale down or scale up or if you want to uh, do any poc it's very easy to um, you know acquire or uh, take or you know spin up a new resource on cloud uh, which which makes it you know easy for the pocs whereas if you want to do the same poc on uh, the on premise it really requires high cost planning and you spin up the server or make a, make use of existing server but you may have um, any impact uh, for the current you know application so that is kind of high cost uh, in on premise but it's very minimal in cloud the performance aspect uh, is um, on the on-premise it's very minimal uh, to moderate the reason I say is this uh, because um, as as the time changes you may um, have you know newer hardware or newer higher memory or you know higher uh, capacity for the network uh, you know data transfer and etc so it's it's the performance of an on-premise could be you know minimal to moderate uh, over time but with cloud, uh, since they make use of all the high, latest hardware and higher you know, network bandwidth and uh, data storage, data transfer and all. So the performance of a uh, cloud infrastructure is really high. And the next aspect is uh, the business continuity. Um, see, in, in the on-premise, it's always impacted because whenever you do an upgrade or maintenance or anything, uh, there will be a downtime. Um, and uh, the continuous you know, business continuity is kind of impacted uh, but it see if you want to minimize the impact uh, you will end up uh, you know, spending more time and energy um, on the on premise whereas uh, on the cloud premise it's always you know, minimal to none uh, because uh, there is lot of you know, load balancing and uh, node basis you know uh, uh, you know any any maintenance or uh, you know downtime will be based on um, the availability um, so it's it's very minimal in uh, case of you know cloud and the next one is the processing uh, that is required or in a billing or in a making sure everything is up and running uh, is very difficult on premise because it requires a lot of manpower and there will be a lot of you know um, processing um, you know especially when you replace a hardware part or you know do an installation or maintain the licenses so those things are um, kind of difficult in the on-premise whereas in the cloud it's all centralized even if you have like thousand servers upgradation or any scaling up or down uh, it can be you know centralized uh, using some or some sort of you know templates and for the billing you get the centralized billing so that um, any organization can easily uh, adopt to cloud and uh, make just one single payment for the entire organization so that becomes very easy in terms of uh, cloud and next thing is um, when it comes to you know free services uh, you get several benefits in the cloud environment because whenever they uh, launch any new uh, services uh, most of the time uh, they will be you know free uh, to certain you know uh, tier usage so you get several benefits on the cloud whereas on the on-premise um, you don't get any such um, you know services for free so these are the um, most important you know comparison between the on-premise and you know, cloud computing so let's move on uh, so before I continue uh, with uh, AWS I would like to thank um, because uh, I would like to thank you know, Amazon, Azure, Google, and uh, my you know Udemy course, especially Stephanie Mark and A Cloud Guru, because I learned a lot from these people. And also, most of the resources in this uh, series of video, I'll be capturing it from um, you know the respective cloud vendor. So I would like to put this thanks and um, you know disclaimer uh, is that you know the, this content was generated in 2022. So uh, some of the new services or changes in the services would be uh, as of 2022. So now that we have understood the cloud computing, let's uh, move on. Uh, so what is AWS? And AWS is nothing but Amazon Web Service. It's provided by Amazon, uh, which is one of the leader in cloud computing 
you know uh, service provider um, so I don't have to add more here I think everybody knows about this and why do we have to um, go with AWS because you know it's one of the leader in uh, cloud computing uh, provider uh, before I say anything I would like to show the report from uh, Gartner so here is the report from Gartner.com. Uh, this is basically a magic quadrant for you know cloud infra and uh, platform services. And if you really look at this, um, this is the magic quadrant. They always you know uh, provide this report based on uh, the challengers, leaders, and visionaries and the niche players. So based on this Gartner report, uh, Amazon is one of the top leader uh, in uh, cloud computing um, service provider. So this is the reason um, um, we would always you know, incline towards AWS because it's one of the leader. So it's as simple as that. So now let's look at uh, the AWS coverages and, and also the services offered by uh, AWS platform. All right, I'm on the homepage of aws.amazon.com and when you go to this um, you know, products, you'll be able to see all the services that are offered by uh, Amazon. Right, uh, it starts with analytics and application integration, blockchain, computing, uh, databases, developer tools, and uh, IoT, machine learning. There are several, you know, products and services offered by AWS. I would um, encourage you to go to this website and then take a look at, um, you know, these sections. So, as a quick, uh, you know, peek into this, uh, let's go to this view all product categories. So here are the product categories. I'll be mainly talking uh, more of uh, no, databases, right? And then the compute and some of the analytics. And we will also talk about um, storage, right? So I, I will start with probably the storage database and computing, and then we will go to uh, different section, um, you know, when time permits, I'll make more videos. And there is a free tier type Whenever you sign up with any uh, AWS um, account, uh, you get an option to use um, some of the services that are always free, uh, right? You know, if you uh, make a check mark on this, you know, you'll get DynamoDB, AWS Glue, Lambda, and the storage gateway. So these are some of the you know free, freely available. Um, of course, there is some limit. We will discuss about that later. But uh, there are several you know free uh, resources. Now let's take a look at the coverage. So in order to understand the AWS coverage, here is the world map and all the blue ones are the existing, um, you know, data centers from uh, AWS and the orange ones are coming soon. Right. So this is where, um, you know, Amazon is trying to set up a new data center. And if you look at it, uh, they are significantly you know, present in uh, US West Coast and East Coast and some part of the Europe, uh, Australia and some Asia. Right, so this is the coverage and this is as of March 2022 and there are uh, available in 26 regions and each region will have uh, two or more availability zones for high availability and performance and several other aspects. Right, some um, services are uh, specific to AZ, multi-AZ, we will be talking about these in my in upcoming videos. Now let's go ahead and uh, create one free account. Uh, I'm going back to the browser and if you see uh, I'm on the AWS amazon.com and there is a sign in button uh, because they have already signed up earlier but if you go to uh, incognito window and go to AWS you will get an uh, create an AWS account um, you know, button go ahead and click on it so the first thing first you will have to sign up for uh, AWS account uh, using the root user account. So this is going to be a email address with the root username. So just type in your email address and also the account name uh, for this AWS account. Just click on verify email address. You will get a verification code on the email. Uh, you will just have to enter that. So here is the verification email. Just copy this uh, verification code and then go back to the uh, sign up page let's paste it here verify okay so now the email address is verified we'll have to uh, give the root user password and make sure you provide a strong password with lowercase uppercase number and a, a symbol and click on uh, continue and here you will uh, have to provide your contact information and you can just choose personal and you can give your uh, you know, full name 
and then the contact number I have added the country region address and click on um, agree and then click to continue this is the step 2 of 5 so there are 3 more steps here okay so address is required I would just say Bangalore and continue okay so here is the important uh, you will have to you know some uh, provide your credit card information uh, so there will be um, uh, some credit of you know few uh, rupees or you know dollars or whatever account you use and make sure uh, you uh, closely monitor this information uh, Amazon will not you know, charge you for um, free tier usage however there is some limitation so you may want to make sure that you're not you know crossing that free limit um, you know uh, limitations okay so I have added my card details and clicking on verify and continue So that will get redirected to a you know bank page and you get an OTP on the mobile phone. I just entered and uh, click on submit. Now that payment is complete. Now it is asking us to confirm your identity. Uh, so for that uh, we will have to give the phone number and this will basically send an SMS. Now we'll have to enter this and click on send SMS. So this will send an SMS to our phone and uh, we will have to enter that. Okay, so now um, yeah, we will have to select the support plan. Uh, I'll just go with the support free and click on complete sign up. So congratulations and we have our um, you know free account, free tier account.